The president is uh, walking in. He's coming right up to the set as we speak. If we can get a camera on him. President Trump has just walked in and he's coming over to uh, our network. I want to thank Laura Ingram very publicly here for giving us extra time to interview the president who is walking right up to the set as we speak. There he is, the commander in chief, and here comes the music and here comes the play. Obviously a lot of the crowd in this arena is huge as we come to you from the Vegas Convention Center. Mr. President, how are you, sir? It's an honor to see you. Wave to the fake news media. Hello, folks. It's great to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. you nice to sit? see you. You want to stand? What do you want to do? Stand, stand. Uh, first, what is your camera? Tell that, me. Right that, here? Okay. Yeah, you can look right here. First, you can thank Laura Ingram, who's given oh. us extra Hannity time tonight. Well, she's very special, and she's doing well. You know what? She's doing well. She's a big supporter of yours. But what do you make of where the Kavanaugh hearings are now? There's a new set of demands that have come out. I think it's a very sad situation. He's an outstanding person. And frankly, Sean, to see what's going on is, is just very, very sad. You say, why didn't somebody call the FBI 36 years ago? I mean, you could also say, when did this all happen? What's going on? Uh, to take a man like this and be smirched. Now, with that being said, let her have her say, and let's see how it all works out. But I don't think you can delay it any longer. They've delayed it a week already. And, and you've, been very, about, you've been very accommodating. I have been accommodating. I say, let her say what she has to say, and let's see how it all comes out. But they've delayed it a week, and they have to get on with it. Yeah. Mr. President, you, you're dealing with a lot, a lot of good economic news today. And there's a lot of media people, it seems like all they ever talk about, and John Solomon and Sarah Carter broke a big story tonight. Great people. And what they're saying is, is that even the intelligence community and the FBI didn't want to give the intel to the Obama administration because there were conflicts and they would weaponize it against you. That's our new information. Well, I'm not surprised to hear it. If you look at what's been going on over the last couple of years, and I'm not just talking about from the time I won the presidency, this took place when I was winning in the primaries. I mean, you look at what's going on, I'm not surprised to hear anything. Before the election, after the election, even the media league strategy, Lisa Page had testified that for nine months they had no evidence at all whatsoever. But it seems to be coming to an end. Well, it has to come to an end. It's so bad for our country. I call it the witch hunt. It is so bad for our country. And when you see Strzok and Page and McCabe with his lies, they gets fired for lying. You see all of the things in Comey for lying and leaking. You see what went on. It's got to come to an end. So bad for our country. The irony in all of this is I have been uncovering all of this when you think about it. Clinton bought and paid for, used funneled money, a dossier, foreign national put it together. A lot they of never, money. They never verified, yep. they never corroborated, and it was the bulk of information. You have now you have now said declassify and redact it. How soon will that be coming? Well, we're moving along, we're working along. We're also dealing with foreign countries that do have a problem. I must tell you, I got called today from two very good allies saying, please, can we talk? So it's not as simple as all that. And we do have to respect their wishes, but it'll all come out. You know what? Elections are about peace and prosperity. Your economic record, I talked about it earlier in the show tonight. Record low unemployment, 14 states, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, women, youth unemployment. We have great news on the economy. Better news with Kim Jong-un. He's not firing rockets over Doing Japan. Well, with, honestly, Korea, North Korea, South Korea. Things are working out very nicely. Tough sanctions very, very against nice. Russia and the Iranian economy and the Chinese economy are both going down as you have taken a tough stand. Well, it's time to take a stand on China. We have no choice. You know, it's been a long time. They've been hurting us and our farmers are great and our farmers are starting to do very well again. It's very interesting. But we're putting very, very heavy sanctions and other things on various countries. And we're getting along with some countries. But we've been ripped off, Sean, by the world. All of these countries for years and years, and we can't do it anymore. Well, you're so getting better deals with Mexico. We had a good deal with Mexico. Good for both. Good for Mexico. Good for us. Everybody's happy. NAFTA was a disaster. 
We lost thousands of plants. We lost millions of jobs. NAFTA was a disaster. We've renegotiated it. We're in the process of working now on Canada. We'll see what happens with Canada. Canada's been tough. They charge 300% tariffs on dairy products. Our farmers, no good. You can't do that. So uh, we'll probably be able to, see, we'll see what happens. I know By this the way, it'll work out well anyway. It, Go ahead. I'll ask one last question, because there's a lot of people in this arena waiting for you, as you can see. I'll ask, I'll ask one Amazing. final question. Amazing people. 47 days from now is the midterm elections. 47 days. We know what the agenda of the Democrats are. They want to go after you. They want endless investigations. They want to keep Obamacare. They want to eliminate ICE. They want open borders. They want the crumbs back, your tax cuts. And I, my question is, the question that every American ought to ask is, are we better off than we were two years ago? What do you say to those people that love you, but maybe aren't so hot on their Republican House or Senate member? You got to go out and vote. We need more Republicans. We'll get everything we want. We need more Republicans. You want to protect your Second Amendment. You want to protect everything. You want to protect all of the great success that you've had over the last little more now than a year and a half. Think of it. We're coming up, can you believe it, on two years when you and I started talking. Actually, this three. is what happened. When you came down the escalator. Well, yeah, if you talk about the campaign itself. But I will say this. You've got to protect. Look at what's going on with the Supreme Court. If we're not there, because we're all together as a group, if we're not there to protect, it is going to be some really bad day for this country. So we're protecting. But we made tremendous gains. You know, the stock market today, it's a good day to do an interview because the stock market today hit the highest level in its history. Today. Now, did you work this interview out no, specifically I didn't. <laughs> for that? But it was up very big today, but it hit the highest, all of the markets today hit the highest level. Now, 401ks are up 57 percent in a short period of time. If the Democrats get in, those numbers will be cut in half. You will Obama see bad never, things. Obama never made, the only president in history that never made 3% GDP growth in a year. All right, the budget negotiations, are you going to demand, you challenge Republicans, fund the wall completely, will you insist on We're it? We're getting $1.6 billion. We're continuing. We spent $3.2 billion. We're continuing to build the wall. I'd like to do it. I could do it so quickly. I'd like to do it in one piece. The Democrats are holding us back. I am told by Republican leadership, and I hope they do it because there are a lot of people counting. See the people with the wall? I want the wall too. Yeah. They, got, they got it down. That they will do it immediately after the election. We've got a billion six. Mm -hmm. A lot of money, but not when it comes You've to building. We've already got three billion you spent. We've got 3.2 billion. It's being built. We've got a billion six. But we have to do much better than that because we can do it very quickly. And you know the bottom line? We need it. The Democrats, they want open borders. They want people coming in. That means crime. We're the opposite. Mm. You got to have a border. You don't have a border. You don't have a country. You it's know about that. Security. It's about security. Securing our children. Are, it's about, and you want a door in your wall. Oh, it's going to have lots of doors. People are going to come in, but they're going to come in through merit. And they have to come in because we have companies moving in from all over the world. They're coming back to the United States. The biggest companies, Foxconn, mm. the biggest companies in the world are coming back. We need people, but they have to come in through merit. Yeah. Mr. President, thank, thank you. you. And thank you. Can you thank Laura again? She's probably going to be mad at me. Laura, I love your show. I watch <laughs> it all the time. And you know what? You are special. You really are. It's a good combination. Thank you, Mr. President. I know this crowd. You ready to hear the president? Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hello, Las Vegas. How are you? How is everybody? We love Las Vegas. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm thrilled to be back in Nevada. And you always have to say that name just right. With thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots 
The people of Nevada love our country, honor our values, and always respect our great American flag. And except for a lot of the fake news that you see from these people back here, this is an incredible time for our country. America is winning again. America is being respected again. because we are finally putting America first again. We have the best economy in our history. And I have to tell you this, if our opponent got into office, which would have been a very sad, sad period of time. <laughs> Instead of your... Uh, It is a pretty sad day, isn't it? Don't worry, it's all going to get better. It's all going to get better. But if our opponent got into office, your 401ks, instead of being up 52% in a short period of time, would have been down 52%. That's what was going to happen. That's what was going to happen. That's where it was going. Wages, right now, are rising, and poverty is plummeting. You see it. Poverty is plummeting. Jobless claims just hit a 50-year low. 50, 5 -0. And the stock market today just hit another all-time high. We're fighting every day for our factories, our ranchers, our great miners, our farmers. And we are now the largest producer of energy in the entire world. And it's not by luck. We're rebuilding our military. We're crushing the terrorists. And we're taking care of our great veterans. We're taking care of our veterans. First time in a long time. We've also just identified the first remains of our fallen warriors from North Korea. These incredible heroes can now lay at rest in American soil. A lot of progress being made on North Korea. A lot of progress. Do you remember before I came in, it looked like we were going to war with North Korea. Now we made a lot of progress. Relationships are getting better and better. And we have our hostages back, and there's no more nuclear testing, and there's no testing of missiles and rockets over Japan. We're doing well, and we're getting our remains back. Very important. We believe no American should be left behind. So we have midterms coming up. And you remember when we had that great, great election almost two years ago. Can you believe it? And you remember the tears from the fake news media when it was obvious that we were going to win. 
And you know what? They're still crying. Look at them, they're still crying. They're still crying. And let them cry. They don't know what the hell happened, but it happened. And that's why we're setting all-time records. That's why we're doing so well. But we have to get out for the midterms. Promise me, you got to get out for the mid. Don't be complacent. You got to get out for the midterm. You got to vote. You got to vote. We need more Republicans. You know, when they say we have a majority, it's like this. It's like this. If somebody has a cold, we don't have a majority that day. It's like. We have to have more Republicans in office. We'll get everything we want so fast. We've got to have it. So tonight, we are joined by some really terrific friends of mine and Republican leaders from the great state of Nevada, including two great candidates for Congress, Crescent Hardy, Crescent, where's Crescent? And somebody that's been supporting me a long time, and he has shown such incredible stamina and loyalty and friendship, and we got to get him to win this race. Danny Tarkanian. Danny. Thanks, Danny. What a great guy. Thank you, Danny. And Danny, thank you for everything. You really are. You've done a great job. Thank you, man. They're going to get you in. Vote for Tarkanian. Also, your next governor, a very popular guy in these parts, with a great family, Adam Laxalt. Adam. And another friend of mine who really was outstanding, because, you know, I have a little, to use an interesting word, bias for this area. I love this area. You know the word bias? They've been talking about bias. Is there bias? Yeah. There was a lot of bias. You know that. But I have bias for this area and also for our great GOP Chairman Michael McDonald. Finally, I want you to please welcome the person that we're all here for tonight. Now, I have to say this. We started out. We weren't friends. I didn't like him. He didn't like me. And as we fought and fought and fought, believe it or not, we started to respect each other, then we started to like each other, then we started to love each other. And the fact is, and the fact is, he has been a tremendous supporter ever since I won the election. He's always been there. We can count on his vote. I mean, Wacky Jackie will never vote for us, folks. Never. She's wacky. She's never going to vote for us. You can count on his vote for Second Amendment, for tax reductions, for regulation cuts, for judges. Oh, look at our judges. Oh, what's going on? You know, one of the reasons I was elected was because you believed that I was going to pick great Supreme Court justices. And Brett Kavanaugh, And I'm not saying anything about anybody else, but I want to tell you that Brett Kavanaugh is one of the finest, 
human beings you will ever have the privilege of knowing or meeting. A great intellect, a great gentleman, an impeccable reputation, went to Yale, top student, went to Yale Law School, top student. So we got to let it play out. But I want to tell you, he is a fine, fine person. So, and he's got tremendous support, I can tell you that, tremendous. Just like Neil Gorsuch, who's now on the Supreme Court, has tremendous support. So we'll let it play out, and I think everything's going to be just fine. This is a high-quality person. And a man that agrees with that, and right now, his vote is more important than mine because he's got to help Brett get in. And I'll tell you what, he respects him just like I respect him. But with Dean, we can count on him. With Jackie, she's never going to vote for us. She may talk it. She even says, you know, a lot of the states, like where they like Trump, these candidates on the other side, they get up and they talk nicely about me, but they're never going to vote. They say, oh, Trump's wonderful. We like him a lot. Well, you know, I won the state by like 34 points. And they get up and they say, oh, we like him a lot. He's great. He's wonderful. But they're never going to vote for us, so it doesn't matter. I'd rather have them say bad things about me and give us their vote. They're never going to vote for us. Because they're voting for Nancy Pelosi. They're voting for... They're voting for the new de facto leader of the Democratic Party, Maxine Waters. And they're voting for crying Chuck Schumer. Crying Chuck. Whereas your incredible senator, Dean Heller, is going to be with us all the time. Come on up here, Dean. Come on up here, Dean. Dean Heller. Boy, does this president know how to pack the people in one room? This is incredible. Mr. President, I think you just turned Nevada red today. Mr. President, welcome to Las Vegas. Home of the running rebels. Home of the Golden Knights. And the future home of the Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> Mr. President, we have 300,000 veterans in the state of Nevada. They're in front of us, and they're behind us. And we're thrilled to have them with us today. They want to thank you for delivering a better health care system at the VA. Mr. President, our veterans want to thank you for giving them the benefits and the support that they deserve. 
And Mr. President, we have thousands, thousands of military men and women that serve here in the state of Nevada. They want to thank you. They want to thank you for funding our armed forces so that they can do their jobs and serve our country. Mr. President, our military men and women want to thank you for the largest pay raise in the last 10 years. But most importantly, Mr. President, thank you for putting Nevada back to work. Because of your administration, Nevada families have more money in their paychecks. Nevada families have more money in their pockets. And Mr. President, because of this stock market that you just mentioned, they're doing better with their pensions and their 401ks. Mr. President, it's an honor to work with you and putting Nevada back to work. Thank you very, very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dean. And Dean really is a, a champion and I can tell you, I work with him. He's a champion for our workers, our families, and for our veterans. And we have to keep him. He led the charge in Congress to pass the most significant veterans' reforms in half a century, including the VA Accountability Act. You know what that is? That means people that work in the VA are accountable if they don't treat our veterans well. If they don't do a good job, if they're sadists and you have that, if they steal and you have that, we say sorry, but you are fired. Right. Before, you couldn't do that. You couldn't do it. Now you can do it. That's been 45 years they've been trying to get it. It doesn't sound like much. It's everything so much. And most importantly, 46 years, VA choice. This is where a veteran has to wait long periods to see a doctor. No longer. They now go and see a private doctor if there's a line. They don't have to wait for 12 days, for 20 days, for 40 days. They go see a doctor. We pay for the doctor, and they get taken care of. They get taken care of. And Dean has led the effort in Congress to fully fund Veterans Affairs. It's a big deal. And he's been really great. He really has. So I just want to say there's been no better friend. We started off slow, but we ended up strong. I've had no better friend in Congress than Dean Heller. So thank you. Thank you. Dean. We've got to elect Republicans. That means a great congressman, potential congressman. And we have to get Dean to fight for Nevada, to fight for our heroes, and to help us make things honest around here. You know what's going on. So we're going to drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. voting, so important. Early voting starts in exactly one month, October 20th. So you can vote early, but you got to get out and vote. And remember this, Dean's Democrat opponent, wacky jacket, Jackie Rosen, She doesn't get it. Jackie Rosen is bought 
and paid for by her donors, 100 percent. She doesn't even want to go to a debate with Dean. She doesn't want to debate. I said, hey, Dean, when's the debate? And he said, she won't debate me. That's not good. That's not good. Rosen doesn't represent Nevada's values. She represents the extreme liberal values of her out-of-state donors, funding almost 90 percent of her campaign. But even that, just so you understand, she's going to do whatever Pelosi and Schumer tell her to do, okay? It doesn't matter. Every one of them, they come in and they say, oh, we want to be bipartisan. They never vote for us. Jackie Rosen voted no on tax cuts. You know that. She voted for the disaster, which is really being changed rapidly. You know, we got rid of the individual mandate, the most unpopular thing. The disaster known as Obamacare. Jackie Rosen voted against Kate's law. And she voted in favor of deadly sanctuary cities, which nobody wants. And Jackie Rosen voted against the VA Accountability Act. How do you do that? How do you do that? So she really, if you think about it, she voted for criminal aliens against veterans, for criminal aliens against citizens of our country. That's where she is. You don't want it. You don't want it. A vote for Wacky Jackie is a vote for the extreme agenda of those people. That's Pelosi Schumer Waters. It's a vote for more taxes. Seriously, it's a vote for more taxes, more crime, and more onerous regulation, which stops everything from happening. You know, we cut regulations more than any administration in the history of our country, and I did it in less than two years. And it's one of the reasons that you have all of those jobs. It's one of the reasons that you can now go out and look for another job if you're not happy, because everybody wants to hire you, and you're getting higher wages for the first time in 21 years. The new platform of the Democrat Party is radical socialism and open borders. And I won't allow the United States of America to become the next Venezuela. That's what they want to do. So, we started the wall a year ago. We've done a lot. We've rebuilt a lot of sections of wall in San Diego and a lot of areas. We're starting a big, brand new section. We spent $1.6 billion, then another $1.6 billion. Unfortunately, sadly, because of the Democrats' obstruction, only $1.6 billion. Sounds like a lot. But it's not when you're talking about what we're talking about. 1.6 billion was just approved. I'm not thrilled, but after the election, they're all telling me we're getting our wall the way we want it. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see if they produce. In this election, and by the way, we want that wall. We want that wall. You know where I am. I could knock it out 
because I do that well. That's what I do well. I build. We could knock that wall out in one year if they gave us the funds. I'll tell you what, though. If you look at Schumer and these people, even though they know you need the wall, they all voted for the wall in 2006. They voted for border security. And then they found out, oh, gee, maybe from their standpoint they can't do that. But they all voted for it. Hillary Clinton voted for it, right? Remember her? But, but I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Everybody knows. <laughs> How is our Justice Department doing? So, so they all wanted the wall. We're going to get the wall. But it would be a lot easier if you get Republicans in there to vote, please, okay? A lot easier. Because their whole agenda on bigger things we can get. You see what we've got, and we've got things that we got $700 billion to rebuild our military. We then got $716 billion to rebuild it second year, 700 and 716 billion dollars. But their whole agenda, they know we want the wall, they want to oppose it, they want to obstruct it, they want to resist. You know the campaign? It's called Resist. Honestly, they're lousy politicians, their policy is terrible, but they're good at sticking together and resisting. That's all they can do. And you are witnessing it right now, but we're going to be victorious. You watch. You watch. It's all they're good at it. Resist. You know, they see the signs. Resist. Resist. Uh. We're for building great economies. They're for resisting. That's what it's all about. But this election, you have to vote for candidates who really know what your heart says, what your values are. You have some great, great Republican candidates. And a lot of people think that I'm always angry at Congress. I'm angry at Democrats because of what they're doing to our country. I'm angry at Democrats because of what they do to our country. Today's Democrat Party is held hostage by left-wing haters, angry mobs, socialist fanatics, deep state bureaucrats, and their fake news allies. This is the big, that's their best partner. That's their best partner. The Democrat Party, their best ally is those people right there. I can't tell you how dishonest and corrupt so much of the media is. I can't even explain it. Impossible to explain. Nobody would believe it. Nobody would. And I don't mean everything. You have some fine people, some fine reporters. I know them. Fine reporters, look, all the red lights are starting to go off. You have some fine people and some wonderful, wonderful professional reporters. But I watch the coverage that we get, and it is so unfair. We could have the greatest success, like, for instance, in North Korea. We're doing great. We're doing great. Moving along. What do they say? There's nothing they can say. So they say, he met with them. That's a defeat, because we met. They can't say anything else. We have the hostage. They said he met so many things. They come up, and then they say, oh, it's not moving fast enough. They've been covering these Democrats for decades. They haven't, they haven't done a thing. I left. What did I leave? Three months ago? We're doing great. But these are people that will take 
a great story and make it as bad as possible. They'll take an okay story and make it horrible. So I cannot tell you strongly enough, that is the single greatest ally of the Democrats. Without them, they wouldn't be getting 5% of the vote. I'll tell you, it's true. It's fake news. Fake news. And you know, I have to say this. When I won the election, we won. I didn't win. We won the whole thing. We won. The New York Times, like, they apologized to their subscribers because they covered the election so badly. Because the subscribers say, how could this happen? He got nothing but bad stories. Because people don't read the New York Times. Because it's a dishonest newspaper. It's terrible. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. When we won, they suffered. But I said, I said, I got one thing that I was, I, in interviews, I say, you know the good news? I'll start now getting fair press. And it happened for about a week. And now they're worse than they ever were. But it doesn't seem to have much of an impact, does it? Not much of an impact. So the resistance, to an extent because of them, is filled with anger because their policies have been exposed as failure. Real anger. The forces opposing us in Washington are the same people who squandered trillions of dollars overseas, who sacrificed our sovereignty, who shipped away our jobs, who oversaw the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of the world. That's what happened to our country. And we're now recovering. We're bringing back our jobs. We're bringing back our companies. In 2016, the American people voted to reject this corrupt globalism. Hey, I'm the President of the United States. I'm not the President of the globe. You voted to make America great again. We are making America greater than ever before, and it's happening before your eyes. Bitter Democrats and their establishment cronies have spent every single day since 2016 trying to undermine the results of this incredible, historic, presidential election that we won together. So we want to keep it going. And we want to do it the easy way. So this election day, go out there and vote. You got to vote. Everybody's got to go out and got to vote. I want to give a victory speech. I want to give a victory speech on the evening of Election Day, which is coming up very quickly. We're going to be talking about America. We're going to be talking about the greatness of our country. We're not going to let people undo the incredible job that we've done over the last almost two-year period. So don't forget. Early voting, folks, early voting, October 20th. Now, we need, we need in this election to do something special. I'm not saying there's ever going to be a time like we just went through. And a lot of people say that you're complacent now. You win the presidency and you're complacent. 
I don't think we're complacent. And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what I did. I'll tell you what I did. Last week, I said, update it. I said, update it. I want to show you, I don't believe there has been any administration in the history of this country that has done more in two years, that we're not even up to two years yet, than our administration. Look at this. So I said, just write down some of the things. Each one, each one, point, 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 four and a half pages, almost four million jobs created since the election. More Americans are now employed than ever recorded before. Think of that. Today, more Americans are working than ever before. We've created more than 400,000 manufacturing jobs. Remember when President Obama said you can't have manufacturing jobs anymore? By the way, he's campaigning again. That's good news. Because if that doesn't spur you on to work, you know, when I was running, I swear, I think he campaigned harder than Hillary Clinton. And we won big. 306, 223. Remember, there is no way, right? There is no way that Donald Trump gets to 270. No, we got to 306. Look, manufacturing jobs, which he said you'll never have again. I'm saying, why won't you have it? We're not going to make anything? These are the best jobs. You know, manufacturing, they're like the best jobs, the most important jobs. Manufacturing jobs growing at the fastest rate in more than 30 years. Economic growth. So they say, when I took this over, I'm telling you, it was a sick puppy. We were headed down. So last quarter, we hit GDP 4.1, adjusted upward 4.2 percent, right? Look, point, point, point. Look at this. New unemployment claims recently hit a 49-year low. You know what that means? Simple. That means people are working. They're working. You know this, you've been hearing, and now it's even better. African-American unemployment has recently achieved the lowest rate ever recorded. What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose, remember? <laughs> remember I said, what do you have to lose? People said, oh, that's not nice. I said, hey, I go through a chart. It talked about the highest crime rates, the worst education, the worst home ownership. I'd go through, and I just looked up one day and I said, you've always been with the Democrats. Vote for me. What the hell do you have to lose? Remember that? Right? Right? Hispanic. Any Hispanic here? I think so. Hispanic American unemployment is the lowest rate in history. Any Asians, Asian, Asian, any Asian. Asian American unemployment recently achieved the lowest rate ever recorded in our history. You've heard me say this, women's unemployment, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, recently reached I'm sorry, only the lowest rate in 65 years. That's not as good. That's not as good as history. Soon, this is important, youth unemployment recently hit the lowest rate in nearly 50 years. So great. Under my administration, veterans unemployment recently reached its lowest rate in numerous decades, whatever that may be. Almost 3.9 million Americans have been lifted off food stamps. I mean, how good is that? 
Think of it. They live better, and it doesn't cost us anything, right? How good is that? We have companies now under the Pledge to America's Workers. They're training under our vocational programs. Workers, there's never been anything like this. We have retail sales surge last month, up over 6% over last year. We signed the biggest package of tax cuts and reforms in the history of the United States. Okay. As a result of the tax bill, small businesses will have the lowest top marginal tax rate in more than 80 years. That's not bad. We got, through a little work and a little coordination, the United States bid for the 2028 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles. We got it. That was us. We just got the U.S., Mexico, Canada. We just got the World Cup in 2026. We needed a lot of... I told you about the record number in history of regulations. That's such a big deal. We enacted regulatory relief for community banks and credit unions so they can now go and loan you money again. Last month, the FDA approved more affordable generic drugs than ever before in its history. And one of the things we did with the FDA is a thing called, I love the name, Right to Try. You know what that is? It was that if you were sick, terminally ill, and we had a drug in the hopper that looked like it was really working out, this country for 50 years would not let you use that drug. They'd say, no, it may harm you. Well, you're terminally ill. So they couldn't get, and there was a reason. I'm not, not that easy. A lot of liability, a lot of everything. Between the insurance companies and various different things, including government. I got it done. It's called right to try. So now, instead of if you have money, if you don't have money, this you just Go to your room. If you have money, I know people, they traveled all over the world begging for a cure. We have the greatest medical people, the greatest medicines in the world. Now you have the right to try, and it's going to work plenty. It's a big thing. We just secured $6 billion for the new funding to fight the opioid epidemic, six billion. You're like this. We withdrew the United States from the job-killing, income-killing Paris Climate Accord. That was costing our country and we have the cleanest air now in the world. We have the cleanest water. Remember this. I'm an environmentalist. I want crystal clean water. I want crystal clean air. That's what we want. But I also want jobs to come to our country. So that was good. We secured a record 700. Listen to this. We confirmed more court judges, think of this, than anybody. And we're going to get, we just got Neil Gorsuch, I told you. We're going to get Brett. We've got great people. Look at this. We moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. We're protecting, remember they said, you'll never get that. They've said that about everything. You'll never get that, you'll never get elected, you'll never this. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is Donald Trump. Oh. Remember the tears? Crying, crying, oh, oh. crying. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the next president of the United States. This is on television. And I say, oh, don't cry, please. I want to be happy. Don't cry. Now they're crying more than ever, except, you know, they're torn. Number one, they're crying, but they're making more money than they ever made because of us, because their stocks are. But you know what's going to happen with these? I tell them, about six months after we start, six months before the election, they're going to endorse Donald Trump for president. You know why? Because if they don't, those broadcasting companies, the New York Times, all of those, they are going bankrupt so fast. So they'll be endorsing us. They'll be endorsing. So I could go on for page after page after page. Look at that. Page after page. And to me, a big thing. We're renegotiating the worst trade deals ever made by any country at any time. So Democrats, I had to bring that out. I, you know, just boom, boom, boom. Why not? Democrats want to give welfare and free health care to illegal aliens funded by the American taxpayers. How about this clown in California who's running for governor? Don't no, think. Just think. Well, you got a lot of people from California that moved here. But how about this guy? Wait. He announces he wants open borders. That means just pouring. And then he wants to give them health care, education, everything. You know what's going to happen? California is going to have a billion people within a very short period of time. Now, I think, and somebody has to ask, who's going to pay for this? And do you know how bad it's going to be? You talk about waiting online for the vets, which we solve. You'll be waiting online for 10 years. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Open borders, come on into California. All over the world, they're going to be pouring into California. Republicans want to protect the safety net for the truly needy Americans, people that need help, not for illegal aliens that come in to our country illegally. And when it comes to health insurance, Donald Trump and Republicans will protect patients with pre-existing conditions. We're going to do that. We want to do that. Democrats want to destroy Medicare with so-called Medicare for all. It's going to be bust before it even gets open. Robbing from our senior citizens. You know that. It's going to, it's going to be one of the great catastrophes ever. The benefits they paid for their entire lives are going to be taken away. Republicans want to protect Medicare for our great seniors who have earned it, and they paid for it for their entire life. They paid for it. The Democrat health care plan would force every American onto government-run health care and virtually eliminate all private and employer-based health care plans in other words, you're going to have really bad health care. It's going to cost a lot of money. Their plan would cost $32 trillion and require at least the doubling of your federal income taxes and probably much higher than that. The Democrats would bankrupt the safety net through totally unlimited and uncontrolled immigration. You will see crime like you've never, ever seen before. The policies of their party aren't just extreme. Frankly, they're dangerous and they're crazy. So what I want you to do, remember Danny and Dean and these people. You're going to go out and vote because we're going to take this country and we're almost there. Remember, it's Make America Great Again, but very shortly, we're going to be changing that logo to Keep America Great.
Keep America. And we're going to lower taxes. USA, 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 they want to raise your taxes. They want to double and triple your taxes. And we are going to save, and we are going to cherish ice, ice. <laughs> Democrats want to open borders, which equals massive crime coming into our country. Republicans want strong borders, and we want no crime. So, here it is. We're going to make our country stronger than ever before. We're going to make our country richer and wealthier and in so — you need that. Look at how well we're doing. We're not ever going to apologize to other countries for our great success or for our great country. You now have a president who is standing up for America. We're standing up for your values. We're standing up for Nevada. And we're standing up for our great national anthem. So we're going to do things. And you know what I've been saying. We're going to start winning again. We're winning now much bigger than I ever thought at a much earlier level. Who would have thought this was going to happen? We thought it was going to happen, but not this fast. Remember this. All during our campaign, I said we're going to start winning again. And you're going to have your representative, Dean Heller, and you're going to go to him. We love this, don't we? And you're going to say, Dean, please see the president. Nevada is winning too much. We can't stand it. We just can't take it. And Dean's going to come to the Oval Office. He's going to say, Mr. President, please, sir, stop winning so much. The people of Nevada can't take it any longer. And what am I going to say? I'm going to say, sorry, Dean. We're going to keep it going. Look, here's the story. We really have turned it around. We're respected again as a country. Every time a person comes into the Oval Office, a president, a king, a queen, a prime minister, they say, Mr. President, congratulations on what you've done with this country. It's true. We've never seen anything like it. All the time. I mean, I mean all, almost. All, I have to be a little bit, otherwise they'll get. <laughs> Almost all the time, they say congratulations. Some of them are saying that they're emulating us. But most importantly, again, we are respected. We are really respected for what we're doing. And it's been a long time since our country has been respected. But we're respected again. So, I love this state. I love the people of this state. I was here a lot. I was here a lot. I was here a lot before I did this political thing. And by the way, how did that work out? That worked out okay. But please remember, it could be very fragile 
if you have the wrong people in Washington, D.C. It can all end very quickly. Bad things can happen to the economy very quickly. It doesn't take many bad decisions, and they will make all bad decisions. We can't let it happen. So I give you a pledge. We're going to work harder than ever before. We're going to work smarter than ever before. We are going to do things that nobody thought was possible, and that's already started. So go out and vote. You're not letting me down. I'm never, ever going to let you down. Thank you very much. We'll be back very soon. Vote for Danny. Vote for Dean. Vote for all of them. We need Republicans in Washington. We're going to keep it, whether it's from Las Vegas to Reno to Carson City. We need every Nevada patriot to go out and vote. Go out and vote. We will keep it going. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs>